Hello and welcome to session five of the UVM Basics course here on Verification Academy, Introducing Transactions. I'm Tom Fitzpatrick, Strategic Verification Architect here at Siemens EDA. And in this session, we're going to look at transactions themselves, how to produce them from a sequencer and how to consume them in a driver. So if you remember our agent setup, we have a sequencer and a driver. The driver's job is to communicate at the pin level to the DUT, so the driver wiggles the pins. But what we really want in UVM is to communicate things at the transaction level. So we use transactions as kind of abstract packets of information, if you will. And this is how we communicate from the sequencer to the driver. So as you'll see, there's really a, just a bunch of method calls in a transaction that allow us to do this communication. And what we're doing is abstracting the information that the driver needs to control the pin wiggles so that we can focus on the problem at the level that we're really thinking about it in terms of reads and write transactions or whatever. So if we look at the UVM class hierarchy again, we saw the class hierarchy for components in the previous session. There's a separate part of the class hierarchy for data. UVM sequence extends UVM sequence item, which in turn extends UVM transaction, and both UVM transaction and UVM component are ultimately extended from UVM object. So they both have a name, the thing that's different about the transactions, sequence items, and sequences is that they are not part of the component hierarchy. They are not structural. They're just data. So they're going to be created and they're going to disappear as we use them throughout the simulation. So they're much lighter weight than components, which is a good thing because we're going to be creating a lot of them. So a user-defined transaction class extends from UVM sequence item. We don't extend directly from UVM transaction because UVM sequence item has some additional infrastructure in it to allow these transactions to be communicated between the sequencer and the driver. So there's really no reason ever to use UVM transaction directly. We extend my transaction from UVM sequence item. We still register these transactions with the factory, but we use the UVM object utils macro to do this. And again, that's because these are extended directly from UVM object. They are not components. As we'll see, there's a difference in how we actually deal with them. Again, notice there's no semicolon at the end of that line. The transaction has a set of data fields or attributes, depending on the protocol that's being modeled. Typically, we define each field as rand so that it will get randomized in the transaction. We can also define a set of base constraints to define sort of reasonable values for the fields. So these constraints will get used by default when we generate random transactions. And you can think of them as being soft in that you can always change your mind later. You can turn constraints on and off in System Verilog. For now, we're just going to define kind of some reasonable restrictions on the values of address and data. The constructor of an object is similar to that of a component in that it always has the same form. So every time you create a data object, you will use this constructor. It only has one argument. It has a name. And that's because, again, these data objects are not part of the component hierarchy. So the idea of a parent argument in the constructor isn't really necessary. So an object is a little simpler than a component because it doesn't have the parent. Therefore, we have just the one argument in the constructor. Now let's take a look at the sequencer, whose job it is to send these transactions to the driver. Usually, we're going to just use a base sequencer. So we don't actually need to extend the UVM sequencer type. If we were, we can see what would happen inside of this comment here. You would extend the UVM sequencer parameterized by the transaction type that you're going to generate. And all you would have to do is register your new sequencer with the factory and specify the constructor. And that's pretty much it. Unless you're actually going to really extend the structure of the sequencer and add in additional ports or properties or whatever, you really don't need to do that. All you have to do is create a type def that extends UVM sequencer parameterized by the transaction type that you're dealing with and give it a name. So the type def here is preferable to actually extending the sequencer unless you have a compelling need to actually extend the sequencer to add more stuff to it, which you hardly ever have to do. So as opposed to the sequencer, which is a component, the sequence is actually just data. So it is a parameterized class. It's parameterized by the type of transaction that you're going to generate. And so we declare our sequence to extend from the UVM sequence base type. We register it with the factory using the UVM object utils macro. And we supply the constructor, again, which is going to take a name argument. So this is the standard object constructor. Then the part of a sequence that is particular to a sequence is the body method. So this is where we define the behavior of the sequence. So if we look inside of this task, again, 
it's a task because it's going to take some time. And in this particular instance, we'll put in a forever loop so that this particular sequence is going to continue to generate transactions until we exit the simulation by dropping objections. You can actually put in your own fixed number of iterations through the loop or even just one or however you want to do that. This is just standard system Verilog in here, so you can create whatever looping structures you want. So depending on your application, you may or may not want a forever loop here. Here we're just going to deal with a forever loop. So the first thing that we do is we create a transaction using the factory method. And in this case, every time we go through this iteration of the forever loop, we're going to create a new transaction. We use the factory method so that we can override the type of transaction that actually gets created. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Again, we use the type ID colon colon create notation to create this. So each time we run through this loop, we're going to create a new transaction object and assign it to the TX pointer. Then we call start item and finish item, and these are the handshaking mechanism that we use to communicate to the driver. We call start item. That indicates to the driver that we have a transaction ready to go. When start item returns, that means that the driver is ready to receive the item. So we randomize the transaction, and we randomize it here because now we can randomize it based on the current state of the system. So if there are constraints in there, or if we add a randomized width, we can actually use the current state of the system to define what those constraints are actually going to be to generate values for that transaction. Once we've done the randomization, then we call finish item, which is what actually sends the transaction to the driver. The reason that we use start item and finish item is that they do several things under the hood to, as I said, synchronize with the driver. Uh, you can actually add your own code in between start item and finish item to do whatever it is you want in terms of handshaking, which is why we, re we recommend that you use these two methods. You can do whatever you want in between start item and finish item. In addition to randomizing, you can do additional lookup, you can record what's going on, anything that you might want to do to interact with that transaction in between the time the driver is ready to get it and you actually send it. That's why we recommend using start item and finish item to communicate with the driver to send the transaction. Okay, so now that we've defined what the transaction is and how the sequencer is going to create that sequence, now we'll look at the driver to see how we're going to consume those transactions. So again, the driver is a component. It is extended from UVM driver, parameterized by the transaction type. Uh, we register it again with the factory and inside of that driver, we will have our virtual interface, we'll have our constructor, we'll have our build phase. Inside of the run phase is where all of the magic happens. So in that run phase, again, we'll have a loop in here. And what we'll do for this particular driver is on the clock edge inside of the virtual interface, we're going to synchronize to the clock edge. The first thing we do is we call get next item from the sequence item port. So this is the connection that we made between the driver and the sequencer. So we call the get next item method of the sequence item port, and that will communicate with the sequence to return the transaction when it's available in the sequence. So the sequence called start item, which indicated that it was ready to send a transaction. The driver calls get next item, which syncs to the start item method in the sequence. And then when the sequence gets through to call finish item, that causes get next item to return with the transaction that has been randomized in the sequence and sent down to the driver. Once we receive that transaction, we use the information in it to drive the pin wiggles in the virtual interface. And then when we're completed driving the transaction, we signal back to the sequence that we're done by calling sequence item port dot item done. That marks the completion of the transaction and causes finish item in the sequence to return. To summarize, in our agent, we have our sequencer and our driver. The driver talks through pin wiggles to the dot, and the sequencer's job is to allow the sequence to generate the transactions and communicate those transactions to the driver. So we have transaction level communication from the sequencer to the driver, and then the driver turns that into pin level communication to the dot. That's it for this session of the UVM Basics class. Please stick around for the next session.